I'm David Greco, Senior Car Handling Designer of F1 2018. I started my racing career and real racing back in 1999, karting in Brazil, where my dad bought me the first go-kart. And then I went up to Formula Renault in North America. And then I also did some races in Italy, the last one in 2013 with a car I just tested a few weeks ago. And then from there, I switched into sim racing. The test we did in Italy, we actually tested two single-seater and it was very interesting to see the difference between two. One was 2008 spec and the other one was this year spec, so about 10 years difference and the progress and the downforce difference was really amazing to see. We had a little bit of understeer on power, so I managed to give them some feedback to improve the car. In about 20 years of experience, I managed also to do many cool things like being in Ferrari, testing cars at Fiorano, and in Vegas doing a major eSport competition. And all this really adds to what I do at work. I joined Codemasters in 2014. It was April 7th, to be exact. And my job was to step by step go more towards simulation. And I really believe that every year we go always more and more towards the simulation. F1 2017, I believe, has been a very good step up from 2016. And the 2016 was a very beautiful step up from 2015. But I believe 2018 is a massive step up because we introduced so many more simulation aspects that I believe will be very well received by all the players. To choose which one is the most important, most advanced, it's quite hard, but I would say probably the system, how we simulate the tire temperature. In F1 2018, it will be the first time in an F1 game that the tire temperature not only will be coming from tire surface, but it will also have tire carcass temperature. And that, together with the tire surface temperature and the heat coming from the brake, means that the player will have to carefully take care of the tire, not only corner by corner, but they have to think about maybe they can push for a few laps and then they have to cool down the tires to be able to push again. On some of the tracks, they will be very difficult to get the temperature. So all this becomes much more tactical for the player. Now the drivers have three different ways to approach a race. The first one will be all attack. So you go very fast the first laps. But obviously the side effect is that mid to end of the race, you will suffer from tire overheating. The other one is to be consistent, be as nice as possible, but push, so that you can keep the tires on very good temperature range for the entire stint. And the third possibility is that they really nurse their tire at the beginning and then they are very fast before they go and pit. The undercut or even the overcut, depending on the tracks, could be not easier, but more effective, depending on the state of the tires at the moment you want to push. We managed to improve the simulation for the suspension and the chassis. We now run at 1,000 hours, which is very fast and very detailed. And now you feel totally connected to the car, what's happening to the chassis, to the suspension, and to the tire, the shift of the weights are much more noticeable. And also the curbs and bumps now can actually upset the car. And the player has to think, is it okay to attack that curb or is it the curb too tall? The force feedback, you feel not only the tire, but you feel the whole steering column and the dampening that is around the steering column because the suspension has improved and the chassis and everything around has improved. Therefore, if you go on a curb and you have a double bounce or three bounce, you actually feel the three bounces on the wheel, something that before we wouldn't be able to feel. In F1 2018, 
the player can actually change the ERS, which is the energy recovery system. While racing, the ERS can be deployed using the MFD, the multifunction display that we introduced a few years ago. Just like changing the fuel mixture, you can actually change the deployment mode of the ERS. On the OSD and on the steering wheel, you can actually see the level of the energy that you have by a bar and also a number that tells you how much battery you have. And then you have the deployment bar, so how much you are deploying and how much you can deploy per lap. And harvesting, the same thing as deployment, but how much you are harvesting and how much you can harvest per lap. It will introduce a key element of tactic to the whole game because you might end up in a situation where you have to defend or maybe somebody in front of you makes a mistake and it's your time to overtake or you want to do an overcut but you were using too much energy and you don't have enough energy to do those two, three laps before you go into the pit. And therefore, all this becomes much more tactical for the player and it will give us very, very interesting races. Players will be able to learn how to effectively use ERS through an ERS practice program. At the end of last year, we received a visit from a former engineer and I was able to learn many things and he was able to actually share some key values of physics and handling of the car. So this year, we will be able to use real data, real downforce levels, drag levels. We managed to make some changes to the way the engine works. So now we have proper engine values for the power and torque. And also, I have to be thankful to him because the idea of all the bulk and the carcass temperature actually came from him. And we actually together developed the best way that would be introduced in our game. I was able to compare to what I had done the previous years. And I was quite surprised that I was very close on downforce levels already. Uh, not too close in the drag levels and the engine power. Actually, it's quite amazing how much power they actually produce and how much drag they also have, these new cars. Looking back in F1 2015, I am very happy where we got to and I do have some ideas to further improve for 2019 because obviously we never stop but we are very close to really be happy with the handling, the way the car feels, the force feedback, how it works. And this year we're very close to what I wanted from a simulator. In over 20 years of career between sim racing and real motorsport, I always came across questions like one title is more simulator than another title because it's very difficult to drive. With my real motorsport experience, I can say that real racing cars are made to have a lot of grip. To me, a simulator is not how easy it is to drive, how easy to make it spin. To me, a simulation is how many real life physical components we simulate. And especially this year, there are not many features that I can think of that we don't simulate. Just call it a game to me is not enough anymore.